This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WLAK Daily News Roundup for Lake Air, 107.5 FM and 1260 AM in Amory. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. A Rust County town is appealing a federal injunction requiring it to use accessible voting machines. The town of Thornapple was hit with the injunction a few weeks ago, accused of violating the Help America Vote Act by removing voting machines and deciding to hand count paper ballots for the April and August primary elections. The town's appeal challenges the definition of voter system. The town attempted to have the lawsuit dismissed, but their motion was denied by Wisconsin Western District Chief U.S. Judge James Peterson. With the general election just days away, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump will hold competing rallies in Wisconsin. Both Vice President Harris and former President Trump are scheduled to hold rallies in the Milwaukee area on Friday, just a few miles away from each other. The Milwaukee area is crucial for both candidates to win the swing state, as most recent presidential elections in the state have been decided by less than 23,000 votes. Trump will return to Fiserv Forum, while Harris will visit the State Fair Park. Superior residents will see a jump in their utility bill after regulators approved rate hikes on Thursday. Superior Water, Light, and Power asked the Wisconsin Public Service Commission for an 18% hike on water, 17% hike on natural gas, and 2.2% hike on electric. Instead, regulators approved a 14.6% increase for gas, a nearly 11% increase for water, and a 1.3% increase for electric. The company says they wanted to raise over $7 million to improve infrastructure and clean up a former gas plant. More than half of the members of a committee studying the future of the Universities of Wisconsin system have recommended that UW-Madison be separated. The Madison campus of the system is by far the largest and most high profile, and 13 of the 18 members of the committee say separating it would help it compete on a national level. UW system officials and Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers have pushed back on the potential future for the school, saying they prefer to solve problems within the system and that the system is working fine. As the 2024 Minnesota deer season opener approaches, Department of Natural Resources officials are sharing reminders for hunters. Officials say deer numbers in the northeast part of the state are behind the goal, and it may take a few more mild winters for them to rebuild their population. DNR officials are also reminding hunters to check out their equipment to make sure everything is in good shape before heading out. If hunters harvest a deer in a chronic wasting disease management zone, they must have it checked out within 48 hours. Northern Wisconsin residents got a bit of early snow for Halloween, and many are hoping that more is on the way. Last year's mild winter caused a variety of issues around the region, especially for businesses that rely on the snow to stay afloat. In addition to the economic hit last year's snow caused, officials say it contributed to higher wildfire dangers last spring as the lack of snow allowed many areas to become too dry when the weather started to warm up. Thursday's snow may have just been a dusting, but it was a welcome sight for many in the area. If you want to vote early in Wisconsin but still haven't done it yet, your window is rapidly closing. The final day for in-person early voting in most communities is Friday, unless your municipality offers early voting over the weekend. There will be no in-person early voting anywhere in Wisconsin on Monday to give election workers the time they need to prepare for Election Day. For details on when in-person early voting will be offered in your area, you should check with your local clerk. If you can't vote early over the weekend, you'll have to wait for Tuesday. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers and the Office of the Commissioner of Insurance have announced nearly $500,000 in funding to expand reproductive and maternal health care coverage. According to a press release, Wisconsin is one of 14 states to receive the funding through the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Expanding Access to Women's Health Grant Program. The OCI will use the funding to conduct a consumer survey, evaluate compliance with contraceptive coverage mandates, and promote access to the services. A homeless shelter in Duluth has announced a planned expansion of their facility with an increase in the number of people experiencing homelessness. Chum officials say work to expand their Duluth facility will begin in the spring of 2025, allowing the shelter to open more beds and space and provide more services for people who are struggling. When originally built, the facility was meant to hold about 30 people. Now officials report they're seeing 100 people a day and many are being forced to sleep on the floor of the shelter due to overcrowding. A Rice Lake man accused of evading police during a high-speed chase has been located and charged. According to the Barron County Sheriff's Office, 21-year-old Logan Olson of Rice Lake was charged with fleeing an officer, recklessly endangering safety, operating with a revoked license, and bail jumping on Monday. 
The chase started when a Barron County officer attempted to stop the motorcycle being driven by Olson when he fled. He allegedly reached speeds of 90 miles per hour and escaped by driving on a walking trail where police could not follow. After collecting nearly 300 submissions and narrowing them down to 10 finalists, it's time for Duluth residents to vote for their favorite in their first ever snowplow naming contest. Among the 10 finalists are names like Sled Zeppelin, Blizzard Wizard, and Edgar Allan Plow. Residents have until November 4th to vote for their favorite name on the City of Duluth's website, and the winner will be announced on November 11th. The winning name will also be displayed on the snowplow at the Christmas City of the North Parade on November 22nd. Duluth officials say construction on the new seawall project near the Duluth Entertainment Convention Center is still on schedule. The project seeks to rebuild the failing seawall to make it more resilient and build connectivity between Bayfront and Canal Park. Officials say that the project is scheduled to be wrapped up sometime around June, as last year's mild winter weather helped crews get started on parts of the project early. The deteriorating seawall had led to sinkholes forming and flooding on the streets during inclement weather. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The Bucks losing streak continues. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. The Milwaukee Bucks won their season opener in Philadelphia. Since then, they've lost four in a row, this time in Memphis, to the Grizzlies, 122-99. to So what do they need to do to get out of this slump? Brooke Lopez. We, we need a little energy, someone to wake us up, yell at us, pick us up, whatever it is. We're going to figure this out eventually, you know. Uh, we're we're going to be a different team in March. The Bucks host the Cavaliers tomorrow night. College football, the Badgers on the road tomorrow night against the Hawkeyes. Kickoff at 6.30. Iowa favored by three points. NFL, the Packers host the Lions Sunday. Jordan Love dealing with that groin injury. Safety, Xavier McKinney, who leads the league in interceptions, named the NFC Defensive Player of the Month, Coach Jeff Halfley. When you play good defense together and you have success and you win games, guys are going to get rewarded, and he deserves to be rewarded. He, in my opinion, is the best safety in the NFL. That's the Packers defensive coordinator, Jeff Halfley, with Sports on Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Holiday movie season is about to kick off and there are two big films to be released in the next couple weeks. And theater owners and studio executives are hoping they crush the gate. It's not quite Barbenheimer, but Gladiator 2 and Wicked both open November 22nd and cumulatively are estimated to pull in almost $150 million to help kick off the holiday box office. Hopefully these films match the amount of buzz and hype that is brewing throughout Hollywood. A Hollywood actor is headed to prison for 12 months and a day for his part in the January 6th insurrection in 2021. Actor Jay Johnston has appeared in shows like Bob's Burgers, Parks and Rec, Arrested Development, and the critically acclaimed Mr. Show. According to NBC News, the actor, who was also in Anchorman and Men in Black, too, pleaded guilty to obstructing officers during civil disorder. According to Variety, the actor stole a police shield to help make a wall against police and pinned an officer against a door frame and was arrested a month later. Tough way to get a new headshot. U.S. Congressman Adam Schiff is proposing legislation that would help keep film and TV production here in the United States. Variety reports that the film industry has wanted these incentives for a long time to help keep production from going overseas. Production in the U.S. has dropped consistently the last three years. Variety says the federal incentives would supplement incentives that already exist in states like Georgia, New Mexico, and Illinois. The shower scene in the film Psycho is iconic and made people scared to take showers. Compared to a new shower scene in Terrifier 3, the psycho scene would be considered subtle, maybe even a love scene. Terrifier 3 is getting attention from the amount of people walking out of the film absolutely disgusted with said scene. One person in the UK actually vomited while watching the scene where two lovers are chainsawed to death in the shower. Filmmakers used 110 gallons of blood. What's really scary is there were probably some people in the audience watching with a smile on their face. Fans of Martha Stewart should check out a new documentary called Martha. But be advised, there is one person who is not a fan of the film, and that is its star, Martha Stewart. Stewart had issues with the way director R.J. Cutler made her look towards the end of the film, in which she says he portrayed her as, quote, a lonely old lady hunched over in the garden. She also has issues with the second half of the film for focusing too much on her prison stint, which Stewart says is a very small part of her life. Martha fans should judge for themselves, though. The film is available to stream on Netflix. Comedian Bill Burr and pop star Charlie XCX will host Saturday Night Live during the month of November. According to Variety, Burr will host the show November 9th, which will be the first episode post-election. This will be the comedian's second time hosting the show. Charlie XCX will host on November 19th and also appear as the musical guest. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is going to be partly cloudy today with a high in the mid to upper 40s this afternoon. Tonight, partly cloudy. We'll drop into the low to mid 30s. Tomorrow, sunshine warmer, mid to upper 50s. And then we have more rain on the way Sunday, Monday into Tuesday. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable.
Temperature now 24. That's your WLAK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at lakeair.radio. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 